with Dua Lipa, you just launched something that I, you, you got to explain to me here. It is called Service 95, which you call a global concierge service. Can you explain what that means? Can you, like, get me restaurant reservations and tickets to <laughs> Hamilton? What is a global <laughs> concierge service when, when you are providing it? Okay, so... I'll give you a little bit of a backstory and then I'll tell you I hope exactly you what it is. I hope you will. All right, fine. So, since I was really young, I've been like, I'm really organized and a little bit crazy in that, in yeah. that sense. And um, I've loved to keep lists and I write down lists about everything, whether it's restaurant recommendations, movies I watch, books I like to read, places I like to go to, articles that I've read, anything. Anything, it can literally be anything, places to work out, hotels to stay in, no matter where I am in the world. And that kind of, I kept adding to it more when I was touring. I kept adding to it constantly of places that I saw online. I kept adding to it when talking to my friends. And my friends, no matter where they are in the world, they can just send me a text message and be like, okay, I'm here. What can I do? Where's the best shopping? And I just like, I take it very seriously. And I go, okay, this is what you can do. This is, you know. Sure. And, um, that was kind of the idea initially behind it of like, okay, I want to share all my lists, my recommendations, thoughts, all into one newsletter. And then the idea grew more and more where I also thought, you know, we can have lots of different thoughts, perspectives, stories, articles that are really interesting in a way that maybe you wouldn't find as easily. I also wanted to make activism um, accessible to people who wanted to get involved. I think there's a lot of noise going on online and sometimes it's hard to kind of filter through exactly what you want to you know read about or learn about and i want to help give people the tools to be able to learn things in maybe a different way well and in that regard you also have an upcoming podcast thing. called yes. at your service it hasn't been released yet but um are you gonna be interviewing people i'm gonna be this? interviewing people, i know yeah. you you subbed in for my friend jimmy kimmel over on abc <laughs> yeah. you can Sit in here anytime you okay, want. Okay, thank the way. you. I'm thank exhausted. You, thank you. <laughs> but do you do you like being interviewed or interviewing? Because some people really don't like being where you are, and they like the sense of control where I am. Um. <laughs> I being one of those people. I uh, I I like I really I'm really enjoying interviewing people. I really am, and I really love like the research element to it and learning about people. Is there, and... is there anything you'd like to ask me? <laughs> Putting me on the spot. Um, well, you're the guest. You get to do what you want. Okay. If you'd rather interview, you may interview me. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Let me have a thing. <laughs> Just one second. Keep I, in I, mind, I, it's, it, C, it's CBS. Okay. I want and nothing. There are limits. There are limits. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. All right. Pop star back that way. Okay. Podcaster. Right. Right. Very serious stuff. So. Um, I love your show, by the way. Amazing audience. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, thank give them a round of applause. I'm such a fan. <laughs> I'm such a fan. It's such. I was so nervous backstage. I'm such a night. fan of yours. I'm thank actually you so really much. nervous oh my God, to, it's such to an honor to interview be here with you. So thank you yeah, so much please. for being here oh, tonight. God, I really yeah. appreciate it. A little nervous. Um, so I think something that your uh, viewers really connect with mm -hmm. in your comedy and your hosting skills. Yes especially in the like, past few years, is how open and honest and authentic you are about the role your faith plays in your life. Oh, that's interesting. And I was wondering, is there any, you know, does your faith and your comedy ever overlap? <laughs> and does one ever win out? I think ultimately, us all being mortal, the faith will win out at the end. <laughs> but I certainly hope when I get to heaven, Jesus has a sense of humor. <laughs> but I will say this, I will say this. Uh, someone was asking me earlier about what I, and this, is, this relates to faith, because my faith is involved with, I'm, I'm a Christian and a Catholic, and that's r r always connected to the idea of um, love and sacrifice being somehow related and giving yourself to other people and that death is not defeat, if you, if you can see where I'm getting at there. Someone was asking me earlier, what movie did I really enjoy this year? And I said, well, I really like Belfast, which is Kenneth Branagh's story of his childhood. And one of the reasons I love it is that 
I'm Irish and uh, Irish American, and it's such an Irish movie. Um, and I think this is also a Catholic thing because it's it's funny and it's sad, and it's funny about being sad. In the same way, that sadness is like a little bit of an emotional death, but not a defeat if you can find a way to laugh about it, because that laughter keeps you from having fear of it, and fear is the thing that keeps you from turning to evil devices to save you from the sadness. As Robert Hayden said, we must not be frightened or cajoled into accepting evil as our deliverance from evil. We must keep struggling to maintain our humanity, though monsters of abstraction threaten and police us. So if there's some relationship between my faith and my comedy, it's that no matter what happens, you are never defeated. You must understand and see this in the light of eternity and find some way to love and laugh with each other. Wow. <laughs> Stephen Colbert, everybody. You can subscribe to her newsletter at service95.com. Do a leap, everybody. We'll be right back with her performance by Two Chains.